power of affirmations. As John said in the Bible, in the beginning was the Word. I almost feel like adding, in the beginning was the thought, and the thought became Word. As we saw before, we start with a thought, with a dream, a very insubstantial thing. But then the next step is to put it in words, affirm it, make it more concrete, more solid. Take those thoughts, turn them into affirmations. Those are the first two essential steps of magical creation. Very simple steps. Once again, I say, it's all very simple. This is not complex. This is not rocket science. It's not even flying a plane. It's not brain surgery. It's something we do every moment in our creative minds. It's just that we also sometimes cancel it right out in our destructive minds, as you, as you might put it. Essentially, I think it boils down to this. We all have this amazing body. We all have an amazing brain. We all have some kind of deep subconscious mind, you could say it, or some kind of connection with an amazingly powerful creative force. That force has already created our bodies from tiny little cells. It's this miraculous force of creation that we are a part of, we're immersed in. It's called life. We are life. We are the forces of life. We're connected to it. And this force, whatever it is, says yes to our thoughts and words. So if we're saying, I am now creating the life of my dreams, this force says yes and starts showing us how starts giving us all these great ideas. But if our next thoughts are, oh, it's so hard, we just cancel it out. The universe says yes to that too. It says, yes, it's hard for you with that thought, yes. So we keep coming back to the powerful thoughts. We keep coming back to our dream, to that thought. And the next step then is to a Affirm that thought. We put that thought in words, an affirmation. To affirm means to make firm. That's the simple process. It's not difficult. Another way to put it in words is simply through prayer. Prayer absolutely works. Unless, again, with our next thoughts, we undo it. Declarations work, which to me are just like affirmations. In the Bible, it says, and you shall decree a thing, and it will become true for you, and light will shine upon your ways. That's from the book of Job's. Affirmations, declaration, prayer, the power of spoken words. What is an affirmation? Put these words of your dreams, of your thoughts, in the present tense as if they're coming to be, in a way you can believe them. It seems to me that an affirmation, I am now a millionaire, will not work if you're struggling to pay the rent because your subconscious mind doesn't accept that. Now, I've heard other people say our subconscious mind accepts everything. So we can say even the wildest, biggest affirmations like, I am a genius, I am brilliant, I am rich, I am free. And our subconscious mind just says, yes, 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 yes. To me, though, the way affirmations have worked for me is to put them in words that I can believe. Even that inner critic can accept that. To me, it's putting them in words like, I am now creating abundance in my life. Even when I was a total poverty case, I could believe, oh, okay, I'm now creating it. I'm now taking the steps to create abundance in my life. So that is a good affirmation. I am now creating abundance in my life. Affirmations work. Affirmations are powerful. We can think about why, but I don't think we can understand it really because it gets right back to the mystery of creation. 
But we do know affirmations and mantras and prayers, if repeated, really can help us reprogram our brains, if you will, create other synaptic pathways, if you will. There's a power in the spoken word, just as there is a power in thought to create something. It all gets down to a great mystery, a wonderful mystery. And I encourage you all to just try it with any of these things, with any of these meditations, any of these ideas. I keep saying, you don't have to believe a word of this, but just try it with an open mind. Try some affirmations for a while. Try something from this course repeatedly that appeals to you for, say, 21 days and see what happens. I've heard other people say it takes 21 days to really change habits. The reason a lot of recovery centers are 28 days is that they change habits in the first 21 and then for a week you make sure those habits are directly in place. But just try some affirmations. Walk out in the morning. Settle your mind, clear your mind, and pray for something or affirm for something in t for 21 days and see what happens. I challenge you because you'll see some pretty remarkable results in your life. Unless you're then undoing it with your next thought, which we'll get to later and dealing with all those doubts and fears that undo our dreams, that undermine our dreams. One wonderful thing to do is to, to say poems to yourself that are uplifting or sing songs that are uplifting. Those are just like affirmations, just like mantras. There's a few poems in the great book, As You Think, that I have in my book, The Magical Path, that I've memorized and have repeated many, many times over the years. The first one is the poem that opens the book, and it sums up so much of what we're saying. It goes like this. Mind is the master power that molds and makes, and we are mind, and evermore we take the tool of thought and shaping what we will, bring forth a thousand joys, a thousand ills. We think in secret, and it comes to pass. The world is but our looking glass. Powerful words, worth repeating. We'll end this session on affirmation with the other poem in that book, too. It's quoted in As You Think by James Allen, Though I found out the actual poet is a woman named Emma Wheeler Wilcox, written in about 1900 or so. This poem is over 100 years old, and it's something I memorized years ago and have often repeated. And I think it has had a deep, deep impact on my life. You will be what you will to be. Let failure find its false content in that poor word environment, but spirit scorns it and is free. Now that first verse might need a, need a little explanation. She uses the word environment and later on circumstance really broadly to mean anything that we use as an excuse to our great success, anything, inner or outer, doubts and fears, or any kind of outer apparent obstacles in our environment or in our circumstances. And she says there's a false content in failure, a false kind of contentment, a sort of laziness, if you will, and the bad side of laziness, or a sort of, well, I wouldn't call it contentment of failure, but a, a comfortable state of mind, but it's a false state of mind, a false content. So think about these words. You will be what you will to be. Let failure find its false content in that poor word environment, but spirit scorns it and is free. 
It masters time. It conquers space. It cows that boastful trickster chance and bids the tyrant circumstance uncrown and take a servant's place. The human will, that force unseen, the offspring of a deathless soul, can hew its way to any goal, the walls of granite intervene. Be not impatient in delay, but wait as one who understands. When spirit rises and commands, the gods are ready to obey. When you dare to dream, when your spirit rises and dares to command, the creative forces of the universe rush in to support you. That's the essence of this course. That's all it takes. That's the one simple thing it takes. Dare to dream, dare to command the creative forces of the universe to support you in your dream, and it will happen.